So I'm really excited about today because there's these two amazing people are coming to my house and I've been working on their new cookbook, which is incredible. It's so exciting and I've been making really interesting foods. I'm not going to talk about it now, but they're on their way. They're going to be here any minute. I want to get this ready for them when they arrive. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Fully Charged Show podcast. This is a really lovely, special, joyous moment because we are joined here today in my kitchen by Henry Firth and Ian Thiesby from Bosch, who I first met when we uh, did uh, our last uh, Fully Charged live show at Farnborough early this year. And you both did an uh, early morning opening session fireside chat, mm -hmm. which was brilliant fun. And you were cooking for the whole time you were there. Can you explain what how that was set up? Because it was a, it was such a thrill for us to have you there. It was a real a real kind of step change in the whole. It affected the whole show. It was great. Well, thank you for having us first no. and foremost. And uh, yeah, it was it was amazing, wasn't it? What was really cool about that was uh, we had the zero carbon kitchen, yeah, mm -hmm. which um, was all about cooking with zero carbon food, i.e., an efficient fuel for your body, which goes really nicely alongside the message mm -hmm. of fully charged life. Well, Ian and I obviously run a plant. -based Based cooking channel uh, for those who don't know and uh, we were cooking every single day teaching people how to cook delicious vegan food yeah, yeah. no it was amazing and the, and the, the actual cooker for the people who yeah. don't know well, well i mean the cooker, you didn't have a gas cooker we did it. not have a gas cooker quite obviously and it was actually being powered by a hyundai car which was just on the side. So that was really, really cool. Yeah. And I feel there was definitely some synergy because Henry and I have been ambassadors for two electric car companies in right. the past. One, we were with Renault for a little while and then we were with Mini. So right. when the opportunity to work together came around, we were like, 100%, let's right. definitely do that. And it was such a great audience, lots of forward-thinking people who are genuinely putting like the next generation first. Because, yeah. you know, they're thinking about where their energy is coming from, what their climate impact is, and their overall carbon footprint. So it was really fantastic. Yeah. Well. So well done for putting it on. <laughs> no, it's, oh, well, no, I, I wish I could claim all the glory. for it. I organised the whole thing. Uh. I've always said if I organised it, it would be a damp tent in a field with one man with a dog moaning about the charging infrastructure. You know, so We've just, been to those festivals too. Yeah, like, yeah, we've been there. <laughs> so true. So what's, what have you been up to since you were at, the, at Fully Charged Live? Oh, good question. I mean, I, it was um, it was a few months ago, wasn't it? So yeah, we've it been uh, cooking away. Right. All, all week, every week, we're cooking recipes in the Bosch kitchen. Uh, we make videos for social media, obviously. So we've been uh, cooking recipes, creating these videos to go on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, all of these channels. Right. Uh, but we've also been building our team internally. Right. So we've gone from just Ian and me in a kitchen. Right. <laughs> this is a very nice kitchen, by the way. It wasn't this nice. But we had quite a nice kitchen for the first five years of Bosch. But we just lived there and worked there. Right. And it was a skeleton crew. Uh, we've now grown the team. So right. we've been trying to get used to, I guess, mm. running a team of yeah. now 12, right. 15 people. Wow. Yep. Um, meanwhile, some travel has happened. We've been to uh, a couple of different countries to go and cook in right. different places. Lots of festival yeah. cooking. Because yeah. festival season is upon so you, us. So that doing a demonstration cooking like you were doing at Fully Charged Live, that is a, a, a thing you've repeated around in different we, venues. Uh, yeah, I mean, because what we do is we kind of cook food on video and we've got used to cooking together as a twosome and yeah. it's really really nice to get the opportunity to go to different places and cook in front of people right um and like we for instance we were cooking in montenegro we went yeah. to budvar we were uh, like the the, the montenegro tourist board took us over to budvar to go and teach a whole bunch of montenegro chefs how to cook vegan food wow. and they really really liked it wow. um uh, but the, the coolest thing that we've done recently was uh, we we headlined uh, a festival called the vegan camp out this was last weekend so it's very fresh right. in our memories yes we did uh we did a big talk on the saturday which was great but in the evening we did something very cool didn't we yeah we um i mean this is a fifteen thousand person festival so it's relatively small i would right. say um but still quite a few people. It's still yeah. a lot of people, yeah. right? And they uh, and we were headlining or co-headlining alongside Ramesh Ranganathan. Oh, right. Um, who's also vegan. So, oh, yeah, is he? I didn't yeah, know that. Wow. Friend of vegans. <laughs> so uh, we, we turn up also as friend of vegans. Yeah. And we're the co-headliners. And so as well as our talk, which was amazing. And um, 
it was to about 5,000 people. So wow. uh, as Incredible. you know, yeah, yeah. talking to that many people, you get a rush of euphoria. Yeah, but we then finished it off with a two and a half hour DJ set yes. to 5,000 people, yeah. wow. which is like being a superstar yeah. DJ. And <laughs> as Ian says, it was a lot of fun. It was. Are you a football fan? I'm not terribly but you, good Do you know the chant? Da, 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 da. Anybody else know that? Yes. It's the Godfather. There's a lot of nodding in the room. It's the Godfather theme tune. Anyway, we we played a dance version of that, and the crowd just went absolutely crazy. And they're singing along. You know, you've got five thousand people singing along, and then you cut the music out and you let them sing, and then you bring it back in. Oh, mate! Oh, it was perfect. It was class. Wow! Wow! I'm overwhelmingly impressed. That is really. I couldn't spin a platter to save my life. It's easy nowadays. I'll be honest. I've been doing it since I was 13 years oh, old. Oh, right, okay. But with technology the way it yeah. is today, um, digital music files, it's actually very easy yeah. to be Even a DJ. I can do it. Yeah, yeah. even you <laughs> can do it, exactly. Because um, that's the one thing I've learned with the, the only DJ I know are now, other than you guys, because you're going right at the top of the list, but the second uh, uh, DJ I know is Craig Charles, who I've worked with oh, for many well, years. Yes. And I went to a gig with him a long time ago when he had his trunk of funk, mm. which was a massive wheelie bag full of Records, full of CDs, I oh, think CDs. it was. Oh, CDs, yeah. okay. And that, that was at that era, and it was heavy, and I had to help him hoik this yeah. thing in and now he goes with a, like a thumb drive and he's got yeah. 460,000 songs on it you know it's kind of that's it's how it's changed yeah. so if, if you need an after show for, for the festival that'd yeah. be fun let's yeah. do it would electronic be fun. music yes. at an electronic festival yeah. let's go we are very good if we, if we do say so ourselves <laughs> But I want to kind of cover the sort of the the background of what you do because I, the, the, this is the the, the beautiful uh, recipe book you gave me on stage, which yes. was lovely. And I've done loads of recipes from this, and it's been really interesting to have a go with them. And just, I mean, I've just sometimes cooked those, and my wife's come back and she's eaten it, and I go, and she said, "Oh, that was nice. What was it?" And I go, "That's from my Bosch cookbook." <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, but they're they're uh, you know they and they were all of them. It, 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 easy to do, except I, I think we've got to say that we did do a, a, a Dan Caesar and I did a demonstration using your wonderful zero carbon kitchen, at this, and it was less than optimal. Oh, oh, really, the oh, two so. of us. I mean, uh, my bit I would argue <laughs> was fine and yeah. very flavoursome. The, he, uh, Dan did the tofu. Dan burnt and ignored. I don't know what he did. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, just... burning tofu is quite difficult. It's and quite hard. This was yeah. our, um, our the tofu fingers. Chili I crispy tofu. tofu. Uh, chili tofu. Is that the one? It might. I think it might. Well, that's what we did because that was the first one I did recipes. here, which was yeah. hugely successful mm. and very popular, it's and everyone delicious. loved it. Yeah, it's yeah. really nice. Great recipe. Yeah. 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 So he, uh, because it's covered in cornstarch, I bet the oil was incredibly hot. It would have been, and it would have been like. And I didn't keep an eye on it. I was letting him do that bit, and I was doing. I think I was doing the chili sauce and fluffing up the rice and all that. Anyway, whatever. The audience loved it. And now, the first time I've ever done a live <laughs> cooking thing, it was, I did enjoy it, but I think people, quite stressful. People like live cooking because, I mean, yeah. everyone eats, everyone yeah. kind of has to cook. Well, maybe you don't have to. You could just eat sandwiches all the time or uh, order off delivery. But generally, most people cook. And I think people appreciate the, 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 the level of skill, dare yeah. I say it, that goes into cooking. And uh, when someone is you know, performing in front of them whilst cooking and they're getting the smells and they're getting the yeah. chat and they're, they're putting themselves in that in that position. I think they're really enjoying yeah, watching. Yeah, no, it's a great, I think it's mm. a great scheme. Well, it's entertainment as well, yeah. if yeah. you think about it. And listening to someone talk is one thing. Comedians are like one of the only people that will pay to go and listen to talk. Yeah. But when you're talking and cooking, yeah. it's kind of two things to focus on. Yeah. But it is a skill and yeah. it is easy to forget about the cooking, the cooking part. And, do the talking. and to make something simple, <laughs> like heating up oil, yeah. seem difficult. Yeah. Because also, you know, I can do either of them. I can do the cooking yes. or the talking. Yeah. But I'm but really both. bad at doing both. That's yeah. the yeah. skill. That's the well, we need to do it together again yes. in some more of your festivals, yeah. and then we can we can develop. We can gradually develop. But now, well, I, what I'm interested in is that I, my uh, our sort of history of eating in this kitchen with our children. So my wife is celiac, so that's gluten free. You no, know, and that's been a challenge. And that's we've known that for like 25 years, mm. so we're used to it now. My daughter just grew up naturally without any talk about anything vegetarian. Mm -hmm. And the way we discovered it, literally, we'd, get, we'd make a little chicken korma or something, and she'd eat all of it except the bits of chicken. And at mm. the end of it, and yeah. this is when she was like four, That's five years old, like a kid, a yeah. little kid. And so we then gradually veered to doing more vegetarian cooking, but my wife is 
basically, I don't, I don't want to be rude about her, but she would literally walk up to a cow, stab it, and cut a piece of beef off it and eat it raw. <laughs> yeah. She's definitely, a, she's definitely a carnivore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And because she's celiac, that the absorption issues around being a celiac are difficult, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. but that's she. I would say her meat eating has dropped by ninety percent since I met it. So she met her, so it's much less. Yeah. But we basically became vegetarian, but we became vegetarian. So cheese, milk, butter. Yeah. Still yeah. definitely part of our diet and mm-hmm. occasionally fish. And so then when I read this and I went, that is the, and, I, and my daughter became a vegan for a long time. And then it, you go that I, and I've done it and mm-hmm. I've been a vegan. I fell in love with the vegan when I was young. Mm-hmm. She wouldn't have anything to do with me. It was a very distant love affair. <laughs> <laughs> but she knew I'd eaten a sausage yeah. in the previous month, you know. But anyway, the, um, but that is the. I think that's the challenge for me personally, and I know it is, and it's so important. And I, and I, my first job was on a farm mm-hmm. with cows. Mm. I understand how the dairy industry works. It's not benign and lovely like they're yeah. doing the adverts. It's yeah. a pretty brutal system. But that I find that last step of, of what switching of, over from vegetarian from, to vegan. Yeah, yeah. yeah quite, I mean, quite a quite a big step, which is surprising. Whereas I actually found not eating meat, I went, oh yeah, whatever, just didn't do it. And then he didn't do it for years. Then he went, oh, all right, am I a vegetarian? It wasn't a, like an overnight decision. It just happened slowly. Mm. But that is... It's yeah. tough, isn't it? It is tough. I mean, because there there is a lot of satisfaction that comes from dairy-based products with cheese and milk and yogurt yeah. and whatnot. There's a there's a, a creaminess, a mouthfeel, an unctuousness. Yeah. Um, and it's also mildly addictive because of the case, casein that's inside it. Right. Um, but yeah, generally, when we first went vegan, this is only eight and a half years ago. So it's right. like, well, well, a while ago. But the step change in the quality of vegan alternative products that are yes, out there it's now huge. is just yeah. absolutely huge yeah. like when we first went, went vegan you'd be able if you wanted vegan uh, butter you'd get margarine and the flavor of that wasn't particularly yeah. good but now you can get vegan butter and it mm-hmm. is truly delicious it's really creamy you can bake with it you can cook anything with it you right. can spread it on your butty and have a wonderful sandwich and then vegan cheese um is getting better right <laughs> it's a work in progress yes. yeah because <laughs> i do remember i foolishly possibly tried to make a bechamel sauce with vegan cheese. Mm-hmm. And I, I had a lovely yellow sauce with a lump of white stuff in the middle. Ah, excellent. Uh, but that was 15, 20 years ago. It right? works so, nowadays. Does it? Yeah, so, yeah, so you could make a sauce the meltiness. With it. Yeah. yeah. Right. I, I would say none of them are perfect for everything. No. So none of them do everything well, but you can get the melty cheese. You can get some that taste good. Some of them have a coconutty flavour. Right. And if you think about coconut and cheese, they don't really no, go don't, together. They don't, don't generally they? go together. So that's the problem with a lot of them. Yeah. But then um, if you, you can make a cheese from nuts, but yeah. nuts are very expensive yeah. and they don't melt, whereas coconut right. oil will kind of melt. Right. So there's all these challenges they're trying to work out. But I think we're, our cheeses are about a six or six and a half out of ten at the yeah. moment right. across the board. But soon there'll be sevens and eights. Yeah. Yeah. And as, as the I mean, years I, develop, they'll it, get better. It, it, talking about vegan cheese, I think it's worth saying that we were in uh, Los Angeles about three or four months ago. Mm. Um, and we were there for this massive vegan um, right. food show. It's called Expo West. And we came across this brand run by this former Google engineer. Wow. And it's called Climax. And what he's basically done is reverse engineered milk and is making m- making cheese like from the ground up. Right. And it is very, very good. It was good. Wow. It was, yeah. it was proper blue cheese. It had the same sort of And so of it's texture. never been near a cow. No. Proper. We actually had a... Um, three uh, uh, plant-based chefs here for a, a, a it's too long to explain why but they cooked us a meal for six of us here you and should have invited a, us I know well, I, went, <laughs> I, I must have missed but it was because it, it was effectively a fee for a job I did where they didn't pay me money but I they see. said have, have these chefs come to your house and I went you're kidding really would they do that and they did and it was amazing oh, oh wow so and, cool. and they brought wine and we were I was so drunk at the end of it because I don't <laughs> drink that much and they yeah. had a different wine for each course nice pairing so you had to drink it it was mm. wonderful but that was just stupendously good mm. beautifully yeah. pre- but you know time consuming with yeah. effort but beautifully extracting and you didn't want it I didn't want it I didn't go oh I'd love to have a sausage to balance it no I didn't want any meat no. or anything or cheese or anything it was but that is kind of the next step is do, do we need to make you know that argument about do we need to make meat substitutes or cheese substitute or butter substitute can we not just move yeah. on and mm. just have 
plant stuff. Yeah, I mean, we do talk about this a lot, actually. And a lot of people would echo your sentiments uh, about this first book, Bosch, because it's, uh, it is very much a celebration of the vegetable. Yeah. Lots of just naturally plant-based dishes. Although there is a little bit of tofu masquerading as fish in there. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. Um, That's we, true, yes. We did make a conscious decision to write it that way, but it was also um, the product of its time. Right. Because six years ago, you couldn't buy chicken alternatives or meat alternatives in shops at all. So it's really interesting to see that as we've been writing a book every year for the last six years, the ingredients we've had available to us have defined the books that we could write. So jackfruit became available for Mm. about book three. So we got some jackfruit recipes in there. There was a banana blossom trend. So I think we may have done a banana blossom (laughs) recipe or two. Although now they've gone out of trend again and no one really cares about banana blossom. Tempeh is another tempeh, one. Tempeh, that's, yeah. that's, a, that's not going anywhere. No. That's, a, that's a trend that's here to stay. Do you know about tempeh? Well, I've, I've, I must have eaten it and I've heard of it. I don't know. What is it? I don't even know. It's I like don't... tofu's more sophisticated older brother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a great way to put but it. But is it like a ferment, is a solid block of stuff, tempeh? Mm. Yeah. yeah like, do you know how like you've got a firm block of tofu? It's yeah. kind of just like one texture all the way through. Yeah. Homogenous. Yeah. It's a nice word. Tempeh is more or less the same, but it's got lumps in there. You can oh. see, you can almost see where it came from. Yeah. There's like lumps of um, of the beans still in there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. But it's actually what the, the way they make it. It's an old Indonesian dish, really. Right. That's where they they kind of orig- originated it. And they would take soybeans and then leave them with a fungus called Rhizoporus oligosporus. Wow. That's the name wow, of the well fungus. <laughs> um, and they would put a bit of that in there and just leave it for a number of days. Wow. And the fungus would kind of take these soybeans and start to digest it and culture it. Mm. And then you end up with this block of kind of nutty flavoured wow. soy, which is really tasty. It's mm. firmer than tofu. It right. cooks really well. Yeah. Uh, it takes on flavour really well. And it's just a wonderful plant-based protein. Wow. And really good for your gut. Packed right. with fibre, yeah. right. packed with vitamins, good cool. stuff. But yeah, it's interesting to your question about the meat, um, the meat alts. Um, we think they're great and we think they have a place yeah. in people's diets because people like those complex flavours and they like those textures mm. and they like the idea of eating protein yeah. as a protein, as a chunk of protein. Although we can debate whether or not it's necessary, people like it because they're used yeah. to it. Mm. So um, we wanted to celebrate that. Right. And what we see as um, these meat alts is we see them as the future. Right. And some people will always uh, make negative noise about the future, whether it's, you know, Batteries yes. for electric vehicles, yeah. right? And, yeah, yeah. and the uh, the elements that they take up, and where would they mind? Yeah. How hard are they to get rid of? Yeah. When you look at vegan protein, vegan meat alts, it's not oh look at this wonderful innovation we've created that's yeah. better for your health and better for the planet and requires no suffering. It's oh, but is it ultra processed? Yeah. But they're not applying that same scrutiny around the phrase ultra processed to their entire shopping basket. Yes, mm-hmm. which is it's, so it's processed. only that meat alts. And that's where you get this kind of unconscious yeah. bias yeah. that we try and push back against. But I think we can all agree that like just eating fruits and vegetables and natural foods is better For across sure. the board. Right. Yeah. But, um, but the, occasionally the odd bit of vegan meat is a great thing. It's yeah. very tasty. It is very tasty. I think we should introduce this. Yes, it's, we it's, should. It's, it's been, a, lucky, lucky. and I think I've got a, so this is the new book, Bosch Meat. <laughs> and when I, cause I didn't know, I don't know what I probably had been told. And there was a, probably an email I haven't written, which was from, from you guys. Mm. But when I opened this, I went, what the hell is this? Yeah, meat. I, mean, I thought they used to do like plant-based stuff. They've really they've sold out. Yeah, the meat industry's got hold of them. Look, there's a load of duck on the front cover, but it is a, it's the most extraordinary. Yeah. So I have had. So what did I do? You, you've told me this. I've chosen just about the most complex yeah. recipe in here. But I just saw that and I went. I've had facon. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and, and, and gone. Well, I can't know quite why to bother. But anyway, I want to have a go at that. So I did. And, wow! Yeah, I mean, Here we go. It's, oh, look at that! I've done some, and it is. Uh, this is uncooked. I should <laughs> yeah. explain this. This is an uncooked lump of. Yeah. There's the block the, of it. The block of it. It's the most that. extraordinary stuff in the world. So, look I, at that. I mean, like we were saying before, that you should take that to the butcher and get them to cut get it. Get them to cut it. On, that's what I want because yeah, it's yeah. the cutting now yeah, is yeah. the difficult bit. Also, you should film the chat with the butcher. He'll be like, yeah. 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 that would be a really there. interesting Actually, conversation. There's a, there's a butcher in Stowe. I could take it to that him. That could be cool, you know. <laughs> I think I've got it to do so it. Good. He might say it's going to mess up my machine. Yeah. He, he might kick you out of the shop. Yeah, quite possibly. Yeah, but that is what is amazing about this is the ingredients that have gone into it. So you've worked this out. 
I mean, there's things in here that I've never, I didn't even know existed. So the liquid smoke, I said, I never yeah. heard about that. Well, I've since asked young people. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, we always yeah. use liquid smoke. How, how do you know about this stuff? <laughs> I've never heard of it. It's quite a niche ingredient. It but, is. Yeah, um, uh, that, but it was that liquid smoke and the vital wheat gluten flour. I have never heard yeah. of it. I've never seen it. And that is basically what holds that together. Mm. That's, that's it. It's the most, that was the, it, I just was baffled. It, as I made this thing, and I followed the recipe as closely as I could. And yeah, well, you've done a very good job. I mean, like like we said, that, that we, this book, what we've we've done with it is there, there are some quite difficult recipes in there. Yeah, but there's also offset with some really, really simple easy recipes. Ones, which I chose one of yeah, them. Yeah. <laughs> so the, at, the, at the front, it's like how to make meat, and what yeah. I would say is this is essentially savoury baking. Yeah, because the process is not dissimilar to making a cake in the sense that there's a little bit of science yes. behind it. There's a bit of a process behind it, but the end result is something that you're really proud of, yeah. and it's it, it, it's Instagram worthy. You know, it's yeah, really, yeah. really cool. Um, so we decided to pop this chapter into the book, uh, not expecting everyone to make that stuff all right. of the time, but we wanted to show people how to do it if they are that way inclined. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, don't be put off by this book because yeah. there's lots <laughs> no, of... No, no, there's lots of a lot yeah. of simpler but, things. But, I mean, it was... What's a, interesting about this recipe that you've chosen, this is... Vegan meat is a bit like baking. Yeah, Vital right. wheat gluten, uh, which is essentially a flour, mm. um, but it's flour with the starch removed. So it's just right. pure protein, right? gluten protein, but you can still make a dough out of it. And that's what you did yeah. here. So you made a dough, but just a protein dough. Yeah. And that's all vegan meat is really. Right. Is it's yeah. just different variations of protein dough. Sometimes the protein is derived from wheat. Right. Sometimes it's derived from peas or right. soybeans. So that's chickpeas in there, isn't it? This you one, you've got chickpeas and yeah. you've got the vital wheat gluten, which yeah. is derived from wheat. Right. So it's kind of similar to making bread and then adding a bit yeah. of flavour. Yeah. Um, and which is, it's really, really interesting that we can now do that. And that's why we wanted to celebrate it with yeah. this book. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, it has. this has been a, a truly extraordinary experience to do this. And <laughs> I haven't cooked, I've, I've cooked a couple of slices and had them and they're, it's edible. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. It's the most bizarre, yeah. bizarre taste. But also, I think the problem is that they were too thick. And I can sit, I, really it. tell if yeah. I could slice it thinner, it would work yeah, better. And you put it in a sandwich. Yeah. You should and have, have bought a knife. Yeah, yeah, if you'd bought it, because my knives aren't up to the job. Yeah. You, you could chop that into lardons and, ha and make it maybe a carbonara suppose, out of it. Yeah, that's... I mean, you'd yeah. need to add quite a fair bit of fat because there's not loads of fat in there. Right. But that looks like a big chunk of guanciale. It does. No, no it does. <laughs> it's extraordinary. But does that... Would that would that that keep for a while in the freezer? I mean, yeah. if I keep it in the freezer, absolutely. It's not, all right, okay. Yeah. So we don't have to we don't have to cook yeah. it all straight away. No, I want to I want to use it in a recipe and see what it's Great. like. Yeah, but that is, uh, I mean, it, I think it is just a it's a fascinating challenge. I think people are going to go bananas with this. I mean, there's because when you look at it, like the chicken, <laughs> is that easier? Would the chicken have been easier? Yes. Ah, oh, yes, yeah. definitely. Because Why didn't I choose the bacon? It's obviously you've got to layer this bacon. Yeah, and that's where all the challenge comes in. Right. You know? Like so, this is kind of more or less the first book of its kind. In right? The sense yeah, I've never seen anything uh, like it. Two yeah. relatively well-selling authors who have just started cooking with ingredients that haven't really been featured in cookbooks previously. Right. And I think this is like it's almost like the tip of the iceberg of a food revolution that yeah. we've all lived through um, over the last eight years. It, you can imagine in fifteen, twenty years' time, people look back at this era yeah. and go. That was an era of real significant change. Right. Because before we went vegan, um, you know, like the vegan word was just a word beginning with V that no one really yeah. understood. Yeah. But since the, over the last decade, it's just been a complete change in right. the way it, people eat. Even if you're still a meat eater, you're probably going to be eating a lot more plants than you used yes, to. Yes, absolutely. And eating a lot less meat than you used to. I know my parents are a prime example of that. Right. And uh, so, yeah, it's, 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 it's quite an interesting change that we've all been through. Yeah. And I mean, that, when you, there were things that, one of the things that, when my daughter was young, I was filming in California and we were driving along a road out in the, in somewhere, I don't, you know, like nowheresville. Mm. And we, there was a cattle, there was a slaughterhouse basically yeah. on the, on the right hand side of the road. And there were cattle pens and we were like raised up on a highway and we could look down on these cattle pens that went on for like, you know, 20 minutes of highway speed wow. driving. There were still hundreds of thousands of cows yeah. wow. and a massive slaughterhouse at the end of it. And that was the cattle pens. And then you see the trucks coming in and unloading yeah. all the cows. And you go, I really don't want a burger. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and you're in, the, you're in the home of the beef burger. And you go, that is where it comes from. No one looks at that. It's at, yeah. And it's, the smell was overwhelming. Really? Oh, oh, of just, oh, just it was waste. hot, hot. It was cow yeah, yeah. Yes. It. that was a polite but, way of saying that. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> that, but I mean, it wasn't like a cow poo in a field. It's rather charming. Yeah. This is 
millions of tons yeah, of it yeah, yeah, yeah. in one place in and, the heat as well you're a science guy right and it's just I'm not very clever you, you've got you literally you've got solar panels in your back <laughs> garden <laughs> it feels it feels like it's just not as an efficient a system no it's right? incredibly you want to make protein yeah. and you want to think about calories for a human from that protein you can just get more calories per energy input yeah. from using a pea than using a cow. Right. Because you've got to rear the cow and feed the cow the grain. You've got to grow clean it. Yeah. And, Huge and amount of stuff, stuff we grow is to feed animals. It's yeah. Just, it's, it's, that it's, is insane when you understand that. It's kind that. of just yeah. trying to get towards a more efficient way to feed the planet um, without any judgment. But we are trying to say, look, you can have a bacon that's made yeah. from animal, or maybe you can have one that's made from plants. Yeah. You can have a burger that's made from an animal, but now you can have one made from plants. Well, we're saying you can now have meat that's made from plants. Yeah. So yeah. we're trying to push the conversation forward with this book a little yeah. bit. Because those uh, the kind of commercially available products, the, the Linda McCartney stuff, the, you know, the... I don't know what the well. There's uh, what was the first time I had it was the uh, the Impossible Burger in uh, America, uh, yes, 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 which yes. was fine. And it was, but then I actually went. I'd rather have a veggie burger. It, yeah. That yeah. was you know it was one because it really does look and smell like a beef burger. It sizzles, it cooks, it bleeds. It bleeds, it's and the very, chef said it's. He said yeah. it's exactly the same as yeah. cooking a, be, a beef burger. Wow. There's no difference in mm. it. I interviewed the guy who, who was making them. He was cooking them. And and it was and you bite into it. And it was just like a burger, and then you go, oh yeah, no, it isn't. You can tell yeah, it isn't. Yeah, it's yeah. Nut, it was kind of There's a nutty. Something it was nice. It wasn't horrible, but it wasn't yeah. like a beef burger. Yeah, we've seen that like vegetable based products are getting really popular too. Yeah. Like um, whereas the bean burger back in the day would just be quite boring, yeah, and quite bland. Yeah. But now, like the bean burger, I've actually seen bean burgers where they take a little bit of vital wheat gluten right. and add it in there to give it a give little it a bit, bit of mouthful. chew. That's what it is. Yeah, and yes, it's quite right. like. Again, it's uh, it, it, people are just getting more creative about the ingredients that they have available to them. Right. Like, for instance, mushrooms have gone from that thing that your mum used to make and you kind of didn't want to eat it yeah. to now. Like, there are dozens of different varieties of right. mushrooms yeah. in most supermarkets. And the way that you cook them, um, you can extract loads and loads of texture, impart loads of flavour into them, and they can right. be the perfect replacement for meat. So, yeah, people are getting very creative with their vegetables yeah. at the moment. Because then the other thing, then, the sort a knock on of all this is are there have you come across farmers in the UK mm. who would have grown sheep and beef and cat pigs or whatever who've now gone oh actually let's grow let's do mushrooms and let's do some vegetables and let's do you know yeah. because there's now a market for mm. that yeah we have I mean? um there's there are stories that are always popping up in the news of um farmers who are making a shift or even expanding right so even what already doing. the biggest yeah. meat companies saying actually let's start investing right. in another company over here that makes plant-based protein as right. well because we can see the world is going that way. So kind of hedging their bets a right. little bit. We, we also heard a really fascinating story um, of, she's called Dr. Alice Bruff, I believe, and mm -hmm. she was a vet who yeah. worked uh, with pigs in right. abattoirs. Right. So she would help the people who basically, um, yeah, slaughtered the Slaughter pigs, the pigs. Mm -hmm. either to keep the pigs alive when they're in the farm or maybe to teach the abattoir workers how to quickly and effectively kill the pigs. Mm. Um, so she was very much in that whole industry. Right. She then kind of defected and went vegan and is now an anti-factory farming campaigner. Right. Um, and we watched her at the, the vegan the camp vegan out. Camp out. Just really interesting to hear her story. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, but well, even, even the people who are still farming, I think are more aware that um, there is benefit and environmental benefit in plant-based food, yeah. this this trend is here to stay, yeah. and I think everyone in the UK is starting to embrace it a little bit more. Right. Definitely, because it is that. Um, I mean, that's there's no question that I don't have any trouble um, being firmly opposed to factory farming, particularly when you see it on yeah. that scale. Yeah. And I, when I was a young man, I went I, by connection of people I knew. I spent an afternoon and in, in a, I won't name the company, but a well-known pork producing company, a slaughterhouse in Wiltshire. So I actually saw pigs coming in and mm -hmm. being, you know, being killed and being butchered, and that really had a lifelong effect on me. And I was, yeah. and, you know, you don't forget that. And I've and I've also made uh, many years ago a. Um, like a game pie mm. for some friends. Uh, I spent hours doing the pastry and I killed a duck, a chicken and a rabbit, yeah. which I put in there and I had to kill them and butcher them and make cook it and do all that. 
and it was not fun. Yeah, that's uh, quite great. It's hardcore. Yeah, it's yeah. hardcore. I, I, I imagine that, and I, I'm not sure I could do that. No, I mean, obviously I not, not now. now. I even, couldn't do it now. Three, no, yeah, not no. like yeah. ten years ago. I'm not sure I would have been able. But to But I was it. really I, determined to kind of be self sufficient. Yeah, I can do yeah. this, and mm. you know, killing a chicken, I've done before. It's quite easy. Yeah. Killing a duck's really. Hard. Yeah, I can They're imagine. very they strong. Yeah, because I suppose they don't want to they be killed. Strangely, do they? don't want to yeah. be killed. And the, the rabbit was the same. <laughs> Funny, yeah. Yeah. None yeah. of them were that thrilled. They didn't like hop up to me and go, "Kill me first! Yeah. I no, want they... to be in your pie." Yeah. But what was extraordinary was very. This is in the 1970s. Very normal couple that came out of London. I was living in Kent at the time. They came mm. out of London. And they had this pie and they were raving about it. It had new potatoes and lovely salad and it was all beautifully, you know, it, I'd done it well. It was not a disaster. Mm. It worked. Yeah. And they loved it. And then they said, oh, I don't know, that is amazing. How did you do that? I said, well, I killed the duck. And they, and they, and they were like, totally freaked out. Yeah. Really? They, absolutely, they had like a panic attack yeah, after they'd eaten it. it. They wow. didn't know that I'd yeah. killed the animals. Yeah. And because I didn't know these people, they were the friends of the guy I was staying with, Eric. I still remember him very well. And he went... Oh yeah, he killed him. I watched him. I watched you know, him was, <laughs> so he uh, kind of backed me up. Yeah, it's yeah. tough, man. <laughs> it's funny, but I, yeah, because but I mean the hypocrisy yeah, of meat yeah. eating in a way is the that's the thing. Yeah. That after that, I always thought that because I'm the same. You know, mm. We're all the same. But when people eat meat and they go, "Well, it has been killed." Yeah, I don't talk about that. Yeah, yeah. but the reaction—I want my steak. Yeah, the reaction from those people should have been one of more like, "Well, wow, yeah, and c- congratulations, you managed to do that." Oh, the the, the, the woman looked weird. at me like I was a psychopath yeah. and I was yeah. a murderer. You know, she she wasn't it, happy about. Yeah, it. there is definitely a like cognitive disconnect yes. there, isn't it? It just doesn't quite make yeah. sense. No. Yeah. Well, there was a silly idea I had, and I've written about it once, I think, and I've, quite a few people have commented on it, which was that you that you should never there's no judgment on people eating meat, but when you're 18, you have to get your meat license, mm. so you eat whatever you like oh, till you're 18. I've heard that, and you at 18. Yeah. You you go into a government-run, hygienic, professionally operated slaughterhouse and a cow comes in or a pig or whatever and you have to kill it and mm. butcher it and you're trained properly and you've got the right kit. It's not chaotic. Mm. And if you and if you do that, you get your meat mm. license. You can then eat meat. It's tough, the isn't meat, it? The meat-eating population would drop to about 4%. It would. <laughs> and also, I mean, you could, because, you know, like, we, we all go to school and kids learn where their food come from to a point. Yeah. But maybe we should be a little bit more explicit about yeah. how... So, like, this is the reality here. I think some schools are doing that. Are they? Because yeah. if you took a load of primary school kids to a slaughterhouse, yeah, it would, they would never. good. Yeah, I think you, you traumatised them. Yeah, so, so I've got a seven-month-old baby. Take that kid and, straight uh, away. Watch this! Well, well, the thing is, the challenge we've got is uh, we probably won't feed her meat. Right? No, she would probably never why eat Why would we? Yeah. But then you do get questions like, well, you're kind of forcing your choices on the child. Mm. But then the reverse is also it's, true because if we were to feed them yeah, meat, yeah. then we're also forcing our choices yeah. on the child. Yeah. So um, we haven't got to that point yet because yeah. she's still mostly yeah, on the bottle yeah. and playing yeah. around with avocados and things. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you're getting her used to vegetables. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, we're going to, the minute she goes to nursery yeah, and school, that's we're going to have some oh. conversations to have, some decisions to make. Yeah. Um, we will try and raise her vegan, but yeah. you also then do have to make sure you're up on your nutrition yeah yeah and you yeah. know like what does she need in her diet where's she going to get her iodine from yeah. all these mm. kind of questions that you need to answer yeah. as a parent but actually that's a perfect example you know oh you're forcing your ideology on your daughter we forced our right our unintentional ideology on our daughter she didn't want to eat meat it's we really were giving interesting her meat. that she made that choice so mm. she wasn't making the connection to an animal no she not until much later she did when taste. she was older she didn't yeah like she taste. just didn't like it she just interesting. Didn't, that is interesting no, it? It, is, it is it was very very not imposed well yeah. i mean the flip side of that is the discussion we had with when my son was young Oh, does he want to have a gun? Because he's playing with his mates. Suddenly, he's got to that age, and they go, pew, pew, pew. Yeah, yeah. And we did, no, we can't have guns. And the first time that he, that I remember it was he was sitting in his high chair, and he would got his little toast, marmite or whatever, in the morning. And I was talking to someone, and then I heard, and he was chomping away, and he was happy and not causing any trouble. And then suddenly, I heard, pew, 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 and he chewed his piece of toast into, into a, gun a gun shape, gun. and he was shooting at me. <laughs> so so uh, what's the point? You know, I just give up. Then. Just he made his own gun. He made his own yeah, gun. Yeah, that's very creative. <laughs> that's so, yeah, that's so I'd crazy. say it was very creative. But that, yeah, I mean, that whole argument around it's this, it, it is interesting. It's a, in a similar way to the arguments we have around electric vehicles and renewables, yeah. and it's like. It's not being imposed. It's not being... But in a way, you imagine if there was the 2030 Meat Reduction Act, like there is with electric vehicles, mm, and that, yeah. that, you, that, that, that would... Imagine if you in, instigated that legislation. It would cause a revolution. There yeah. would be riots. No, no, no. You know? it, there really would be. But yeah. a, lot, a lot of companies are doing it. 
So right. we're, we're actually working with quite a few, uh, I would say, big restaurant chains, hospitality groups on their climate strategy right. for 2030. Because a lot of these big companies have got 2030 carbon goals. Yes, they yeah. want to get to net zero either by 2030 or by 2040. Yeah. Um, it's becoming really important in big companies to have these corporate social responsibility goals. So um, we're working with quite a few of them on getting to that point and showing them how they can make these simple swaps mm. to reduce the carbon footprint of yeah. your food. Because it is like, it's such a big part of our personal carb- carbon footprint yeah. and our corporate carbon footprint is yeah. just the food that we eat. Yeah, And it's not that hard no, to no. swap it out. It's the easiest thing you can do as an individual, really. I mean, obviously, you can get your electric car. Yeah, but that's a big commitment. Which, which is a big commitment, and it's not for everyone. Not everyone can no. get an electric yeah. car. And also, not everyone fact, needs a car. No, I thought that. Needs a huge car, number yeah. of people don't have cars. I think it's important yeah. to remember. You, that. you might be able to cast some light. But this is a slight aside, but it's relevant. Uh, I was having a conversation with my dad the other day, and he said that he had read an article, and he said that the borough of Westminster in London, or Westminster in London, has got more charging points than Leeds, oh, Sheffield, yeah. Manchester, and Birmingham combined. Right, yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, so, so it's very, very difficult for people just outside of the South yeah. To, to, yeah. to operate an electric vehicle properly. Yes. It's, um, uh, yes. It's, it is, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's doable. It's but doable, it's difficult. but it's difficult. And Especially, also, yeah, West Bridge, because they've got so many lampposts. Yeah. And they've also got, I didn't know this, they've got lampposts on the curb side rather than the building so if you know if you imagine a pavement yeah yeah and you either have a lamppost next to the building or you have it next to the road and yeah. there's a next to the road which apparently is quite unusual in the whole country I so see. they wouldn't so do that they wouldn't be installed there now you'd put them on the other side I okay see. but because they're on that they're next to the curb then you can put a charger in it very so you easily don't and you don't have a wire going across the pavement but yeah. that's it. i also noticed um so, so I, I've noticed that these um lampposts were getting um electric charging points maybe about 18 months ago yeah. or so. And so, so say this is the pavement here, yeah. right? The the charging points used to come into the pavement, which reduces the amount of yeah. uh, space that for people to walk down to walk on down. a busy London street. But now they've started they're, moving they're to the side, yeah. which is better just for like, <laughs> well, human Well, that's because they, they used a, it was a, a company called Ubertricity, who we featured mm, on the Fully yeah. Charged Show okay, before cool. anyone else, mm. who put those, who made the door. No, Ubertricity. 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 Right. They're uh, from Berlin. Okay. We met them in Berlin and they replaced, so they just made a door. There's an inspection door mm. for wiring and everything. Yes, yes. And they just replaced that door with a door with a socket in it. It was really, Genius. so it was a I super see. cheap, instant mm. thing. That was their whole sh- uh, shtick. And um, I'm using the term shtick because shtick. it's German. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where we met him. But they... Is, is shtick a German word? It's, I think it's, it is. It's or maybe shtick. is it a Yiddish word? Is, I feel I like it's... Shtick. I'm getting Yiddish vibes. Oh, yeah, maybe well, you're right. Like, a, like, kind of, like what, what else? a schmuck. Like a schmuck. schmuck. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Schlemiel. <laughs> I love schmuck. all those yeah. terms. Yeah, we yeah. are going way off topic. I'm <laughs> <laughs> just reminding myself. A schlep. A schlep. A schlep. But I mean, they're... The what am I saying? There was a point. There was a com- there was a there is a correlation between that tra- that slow transfer. I mean, I think because that's the the reality of what's happening with electric vehicles is it's going to take decades. Yes, it's going to take a while. And that's what you know. People are panicking. Oh, I'm going to take my car away. No, 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 no you yeah. can keep. You can drive your diesel car for another fifty years. You're going to mm. die before you have to get an electric yeah. car. It's got, but two generations time. It's going to be probably yeah. you're going to have to buy a classic car. The infrastructure is going to be there. And the range on the cars will be there. Yeah, yeah. All and that also, stuff. I suppose as as the cars become secondhand, they become cheaper. Yeah, and yeah. They're more readily available for more people. So yeah, the, the, it, you can just see this kind of yeah. shift. But that is it. interesting to know if that is also happening with plant based diets becoming more popular. I mean, it clearly is. Yeah, we, we've got the when same I was thing. a proper hippie back in the seventies. I met people who were vegans yeah. and vegetarians, and that was it was a thing that was going on, and mm. I was very aware of it. But and uh, and I had all sorts of daft theories that it suited some people and not others, and I'm I'm ashamed of myself <laughs> now. But it was ignorance, you know, at yeah. the time. There was a, there were two couples that were wonderfully glamorous hippies that I admired, who lived in a little cottage not far from where I grew up. And two of them were the most, I'm going to use the word fecund. They were sort of fertile, beautiful, mm. stunning. Their hair was, they had long, yeah. the guy had long hair. The woman was beautiful. And they lived with two people who were like sort of scrawny, pale, <coughs> you know, like yeah, yeah. they were coughing. And I thought, oh my God, the vegetarian diet suits them and not them. 
the other two people were junkies. I <laughs> oh, see. Right. Okay. And they, the, the, the healthy couple weren't. No. And they didn't not. smoke and they didn't drink. This lot smoked and drank and used heroin, okay. which tends to have an effect on your diet. Yeah, it's not the diet. best. Yeah. It's not recommended, <laughs> exactly. is it? No. Yeah, you're, you're not doing the Bosch heroin. <laughs> no, well, that's not coming out. No. Uh, I don't think <laughs> the so. The ultimate Tom, weight loss. Have we, have we got that in the list? <laughs> no. The, Bo- the Bosch heroin book is not <laughs> <It's> planned, <laughs> currently. We're going way off topic. Yeah, but to answer your question, yeah, we, we see the same thing with vegan food. Um, right. There's this uh, graph called the Gartner Hype Cycle. Have you heard of that? I think, almost think I have, but anyway, explain it. It, definitely it not- basically goes up and up and up and then down like that and then gradually comes back up. And it, it's a really good way of describing any new technology right. and the adoption of it. So it, it works for electric vehicles. It yeah. works for like Spotify, music on demand, and it works for vegan meat. Right. And what you get is you get this kind of bubbly, frothy hype moment right. where um, everyone gets FOMO. All the investors want a piece of this exciting new technology mm-hmm. and company valuations get overblown. Right. And then the bottom falls out of that because yeah. it's unsustainable. And then it just tanks and everyone says oh the trend is dead the trend is over doom and gloom for electric vehicles or doom and gloom for vegan meat and true enough some companies will fail because they can't continue to just raise more investment based on no actual real sales but then when you what you get is the trend doesn't go away it doesn't go back to zero it just gets a more sustainable growth curve right slightly slower but slightly slower exactly and it's like it's like steering a giant ship isn't it this stuff is slow yeah generational Mm. change and we are seeing that you know kids and teenagers they are opting for more plant-based protein right. and supermarkets are still focused on driving plant-based proteins even despite the doom and gloom that we're seeing in the right. news at the moment yeah. so i think it's there's very much the same kind of thing that we're seeing here as with electric vehicles but the change is continuing to yeah. grow don't want to ha- bang on about it too much but the the waste involved in producing meat and the the impact on the environment mm. and the fact that when people say well agriculture makes up 25 percent of global co or whatever it is it's not agriculture it's raising animals yeah, yeah you know it's not it's not growing corn or wheat or fruit or vegetables that yeah. isn't doing it it's no. it's animals and, and that's- what, one of the worst things uh, is that you know there's vast miles and miles and miles of land that is dedicated to growing Crops that are fed to animals. Yeah. So it's just, uh, as you were mentioning before, about it's just uh, an illogical food system when you basically, you're taking the energy of the sun, you're getting the energy out of the plant, putting it into uh, the vehicle. Another machine, yeah. The cow is your protein-making machine. Makes no sense, really. But it it is is interesting, right, because it's not that simple. There's always no. more complex always, answers. Yeah, and so what we'll often hear is talk about monocrops. Mm, and right. we also don't want fields and fields, fields of soybeans. Mono- no, so no, you no. get no biodiversity. But the thing is, the monocrop problem is not just a vegan food problem. It's just a mass agriculture yeah. problem, regardless yeah. well, of I would say the majority of soy, particularly soy that's grown, is fed to animals anyway Absolutely. that we grow yeah. now. Yeah. That's where most of it goes. Yeah. So yeah. We, if we didn't have the animals, we could reduce the amount of soy yeah. we grow by a huge margin. And the other thing that people talk about a lot is transport and yeah. um, you know food miles and we can all agree it's good to have seasonal local food if you can but when you look at the carbon impact of what we eat mm. actually transport accounts for a very small amount of that right. yeah. so right. if you're yes. just purely thinking about carbon footprint personal carbon footprint having local food isn't going to make a huge difference no. No. but it is a bit of a red herring and something that people talk yeah. about a lot yeah. yes in fact we covered this uh, very topic with Hannah Ritchie on who works for our world in data she's a data mm. scientist on the Fully Charged Show podcast. And because I was worried about the beans I'd ha- bought in, without looking at the label and it was from, they they were grown from. in Kenya. Yeah. And mm. she said, that's that's the least of your problems. Yeah, it really yeah. is. It'd be a fraction it's of a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction. It's yeah. really weird because I, I felt, oh, that's so bad. But, but actually, what it's, ha- ha- is there's a farmer in Kenya who's making a living because he's growing beans when we can't grow them here. Yeah. So there's and quite, those ships, like they, they pack yeah, a lot, they do on a lot, lot of They beans. put a lot of stuff on the ships yeah. and yeah. it's, you know, yeah. they don't fly food no. like that in aeroplanes. No. That would be really not great, but the ships are quite actually. But quite understanding that—that's the problem, isn't it? Really, and it is the same with electric vehicles. It's the education process is yeah. people understanding where where stuff comes from, yeah. and the fact that someone said this this year to me, and I never heard it before. It's so blinking obvious. Is everything we use is either dug up or grown? 
everything in our world. So yeah. that cooker that it was all dug comes up, off the planet. that was grown. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just trying to think yeah. about that. Everything. For a there's yeah. nothing. And I went, no, there's got to be other things. What about well, wood? Oh, that's fished. grown. I mean, you can rip, pull it out of the sea, but yeah. it's still coming. It's off still the grown. Earth. It's been grown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah it's pr- that's interesting. Well, it's all yeah. just resources. It's, the earth yeah. resources. Yeah. It's funny it? because it's, at some point in human history, that will change. In the yeah. sense that you'll go, you'll be able to mine an well, asteroid. What about, or you'll what about go energy the from the sun? But, well, that's part of well, grow, it's part of what makes stuff grow. Yeah, yeah it's, I guess but also, we, we need I mean, equipment that has been yeah. dug up. Or but also the, the, the recycling of the material. This is, I think, the critical thing that's kind of not understood. But the fact that the technology that's being developed now, in terms of the, the hardware that we use, so the cars. So much of that can be recycled and used again, and particularly mm. batteries, mm. and that's what's happening now. You, we couldn't, we didn't even think. Of, you, you know, can you recycle a gallon of diesel? Don't be an idiot. Yeah, <laughs> of yeah. course you can't. But you, you can burn it. But you can't. And so that's the kind of background of what we've been trying to say is about burning yeah. stuff. We're never going to stop burning stuff. It's mm. ridiculous to even say it. But as a goal for the human race to aim towards, what can we do without burning yeah. stuff? Is yeah. the we, kind of surely in the far future we will. I think do you know so. they've just yeah. they've just done uh, fission? Mm-hmm. They've just successfully tested uh, a fission reaction again for the second time, right. where they basically take two uh, hydrogen atoms yeah. and combine them to create helium and an incredible amount of energy. Oh. They've just done it for the second time. And was in there lab. more energy out? Yeah, than more, in. more right, energy out than in. Wow. Significantly more. Done it for the second time, I've and that is a route to. Like it's a form of nuclear power, but there's no real nuclear no, waste. No, it's completely from that. different. We so can use kind of all the nuclear waste we've got energy. to produce. Yeah, no, it's totally different. That, that, you know, well, that's, fifty that's years, hundred years, that's, we might yeah. be able to stop digging up oil. Maybe. Oh, I, I hope oh, so. Yeah. Without question, we have to. Yeah. So, so, so with regard to recycling car batteries. Yeah. So is it? Is it? It's, it's, it's already. It's already happening. happening. Yeah, yeah. It is. And it's going to be. It's the the issue there are now with the couple of recycling companies we've been to see and the ones we know about is there aren't the batteries. Okay. I.e., the batteries are lasting longer than mm. everyone predicted. Particularly Jeremy Clarkson. Great. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's <laughs> always that worth guy. having a pot Honestly, at him. yeah. Exactly. We're <laughs> but, not big fans of him. He's, uh, he's funny, but he's very annoying. Yeah. yeah. It's a, a, a weird no, that's combination. A, yeah, it's, that's the perfect description. It's just like Piers Morgan, right? It's yeah. the same, same vibe. Yeah. His new show, or oh, not, it's not that new anymore, but that's one of the best shows on TV, Clarkson's Farm. The farming, it's wonderful. It's very good And it show. explains farming. It's yeah. quite embarrassing because one of the presenters of um, Country File lives mm. very near, oh, yeah. and he's lovely. And in a way, what Country File have been trying to do for the last... God knows how many, 40, 30 years. Is tell that story. Is tell that story. Yeah. Explain what farming, how yeah. difficult it is to do farming. I mean, it is, uh, you know, but anyway. Yeah, it's yeah. like Top Gear, but for farmers. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to give them any more publicity. <laughs> no. What is, okay, so the meat book, so when is this, this is out very soon? Yes, it's out, is it out next week? 17th of August. Oh, so 17th, so by the time yeah. you, you it's, out it's, out. it's out. Go so and have it out now, yeah. 17th of August in the UK, and then I Bosh believe- meat. <laughs> Yeah. Bosh me! Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, and then it, I think it's coming maybe a week or so later in the states. Right. But yeah, that will be available on Amazon, obviously Waterstones, and then yeah. all major supermarkets for the first like two months of it being out. Because it's going to be one of those things where you go, oh, we got those people coming around on Friday. I, I want to do a chicken ticker mm. that's got no. Mm. They're all vegetarian. I'll get them. I'll I'll get them. Yes. But you know, because well, then it would. I think it's going to be special. That you want to do every day, and it's mm. and it's easy, and it's less of a kind of. Big step. That yeah. is, a, you, I mean, I would imagine even the simpler ones are more complicated yeah. than that. You've it, got to go through a bit of a process. If you wanted to pull the wool over somebody's eyes with a recipe in this book, I would suggest the bolognese. Right. It's very meaty indeed. Wow. It's because we we, uh, we we take vegan uh, bacon, which is really flavorful, and also vegan mince, which is obviously really flavorful. When you put those two things together, your brain is just like, this is definitely meat because there's right. definitely two different flavors of meat mm. here. Wow. And it's um, it's it's a delicious dish. You should definitely give it a whirl. Right. I'm, I'm going to do that. Yeah. One. But there's there's so much to choose from in there. Yeah, I right. mean, we when we were cooking at your festival, we yeah. made uh, the Lebanese lamb flatbreads, mm. which right. are just incredible. And we're using you know things like mint that you would associate with lamb yeah maybe a bit of cumin to give that kind of oh. meaty umami flavor but actually using jackfruit instead of lamb yeah. wow. those flatbreads are amazing what else did we cook uh on that show oh what else did we cook that show i can't remember 
You were There's busy, loads and loads. Yeah, we, yeah. we, we, we so much really good stuff in there. Yeah. But there are some quick recipes in here as well. So right. we have a five minute noodles, right? Which you should definitely try because oh, yeah. they are absolutely delicious and they genuinely take five minutes. <laughs> right. Yeah. I tested myself about a month ago. And they took me six, if I'm honest. Oh, yeah. So you know, <laughs> we might have to do a reprint for that. Yeah. Uh, but there's some super speedy recipes in there right. as well. But the really cool thing that we wanted to do from the beginning is to have it broken down by chapter. Right. So that we've got poultry as a chapter. We've yeah. got beef, fish. Cheese, yeah, the because tu- you've got tuna, which I'm, just yeah, got I'm really intrigued chat, yeah. the tuna. Yeah. And it's just, yeah. it's <laughs> frankly, this is the cookbook that we wanted to cook yeah. from. Yeah, probably this is the cookbook we would have written seven years ago if the world would have been ready for it yeah. and if technology would have been ready. But yeah. those ingredients weren't out. Yes, but they are now. Yeah, they are. No, that, really. it is extraordinary. Um, now, and also, we must remember to mention the fact that you are, so you're going to be cooking in Amsterdam at Fully yes. Charged Live Amsterdam, which Can't is wait for that. very exciting in so, November. So when, in November, right, so I will have been a dad for just under a month. Oh, my but goodness. But I got a pass. Oh, did you? You yeah, allowed? I got a pass. Yeah, the missus is like, okay, you can you do can it. You go there. But like, you, you don't stay too Amsterdam, long. Yeah, it's in and out. <laughs> like, no messing around. <laughs> Yeah, that's going to be great. So we're doing the Zero Carbon Kitchen. Zero Carbon Kitchen. Which is going to be awesome. And we're also coming with you to to Australia. To Australia. That is amazing. So cool. Never been to Oz. Wow. Oh, you will love it. And the the enthusiasm. When we went last year, I'm always super nervous for the first show in anywhere we go. Last year was Mm. uh, Amsterdam was the first show. It was great. This year in uh, in, uh, Sydney, early this year, I was going, no one's going to come. No one knows about footage. It was packed. Uh, It was an incredibly enthusiastic uh, 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 audience. They loved it. And and so we've moved to a different venue there, a bigger venue, so it's easier to do test drives and all that. But it's amazing. It's the Olympic Park. Where, oh, the Olymp- really? where the 2000 Olympics were. Oh, that's yeah. so cool. I was wow. going to ask, that's, that's really so cool. So it's in a uh, little north, south, east, west, west uh, Sydney, but not far. It's not, not like far, way no. out in the boondocks. It's, it's amazing. It's an I amazing venue, wait. and you'll have a, incredible uh, audiences there. It will be really good. Well, yeah. they, they showed our TV show in Australia, so yeah. we, oh, we right. have a fan base over yeah. there. Oh, and, great. Uh, oh, we are, we are excited to go there. We've yeah. not been there. You've never been, I've never you? been ever. I went no. there 20 years ago, but it, it's also great that it's, in February, yeah. so it's going to be summer when it's, everybody it's here quite is cold. Yes. It'll be hot. <laughs> um, but most importantly, it's just really exciting to get together and kind of. I, I love the fact that we've got this symbiosis between, yeah, you know, no, it's incredible. zero carbon yeah. or minimal carbon energy yeah. for yeah. vehicles, zero carbon cooking. Yeah. It just makes sense. Yeah. yeah, no, it's going to be great. And also, I think an observation quickly about Australia: the first time I went, which mm. was in the eighties, you could go in anywhere and you could get a pie. Oh, yeah. Or you could get a bit of fish and chips, or oh, yeah. you could get a pie, yeah. and you get a pie and mash. <laughs> and that was kind of like, oh, God. And it's now transformed the okay. kind of diet there, even since you were there. It is incredible, the yeah. variety. Loads of vegetarian restaurants, loads of vegan restaurants, loads of everything. It's amazing. I think partly because of all the different races that live there. And exactly. there. So Vietnam, yeah. Vietnamese, Malaysian, Chinese, yeah. Yeah, everything. Yeah. It's incredible. I, I hear that Melbourne has got a, a serious amount of vegan restaurants. Yes. Like it, it's Melbourne is, I would say, kind of most like, of it. Yeah. Shall we say the Shoreditch of, of yes. Australia? Yes, the entire city of Melbourne is <laughs> yeah. like Shoreditch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's going to be fun, man. I can't wait. So thanks very much for having no, us. No, it's it's we're pleasure. thrilled that you're coming. It's going to be it's great. brilliant. No, that's, and it's great that you've come here today. And I, I'm, I'm now going to slice up a bit of my bacon and... and whack it in a bread. Whack it in a bread. <laughs> I tell you, one of the interesting, just quick observations yeah. is when you cook a piece of bacon, it shrinks. Yes. Because it's obviously probably inflated with water to sell it or whatever. Mm, yeah. When you cook this, it gets bigger. Okay, yeah, that's right. You're right. <laughs> so you've got some more money. Slightly bigger yeah. pan. Even more bacon. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, get even more, you get more so bang for your buck. It's a very impressive looking cockerel over your shoulder. Oh yeah, that's a, that's the chicken that escapes. Oh right, okay. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's just he's strutting around yeah, doing yeah. his thing. He certainly loves this book. He lo- yeah, they, yeah, exactly. Chickens love this book. <laughs> exactly. they, they've told me they're very happy that I've got that. Book. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Brilliant to have you here. Thanks so much for coming today. Thanks, really good to talk to you. It's been yeah, fantastic. Thanks Thank for you. having us. Great stuff. Oh yeah, there he is. Oh, is there he is. <laughs> yeah. Right there. But that's all we've got time for. Uh, I think you've enjoyed that. I'm sure you have as much as we have. It's been such fun talking to these guys. I love what they're doing. Um, please do uh, check out the Fully Charged Dot Show website where all the links to everything we're doing, the live shows, all that stuff is going to be on there. We'll put links to Bosch's uh, activities in the show notes for this episode. And um, what else have I got to say? Something about um, uh, do uh, do leave lovely reviews for us on the on your uh, download app. 
<laughs> and thumbs ups and thumbs five up. stars thumbs and up. Up. yeah, yeah all those subscribe. things I'm so good at remembering all those things <laughs> thank you for watching and listening see ya peace